Welcome to USMLEFastTrack.com. The section we're going to talk about today is from First Aid for the USMLE Step 1, 2013 edition. Page 355. What is aplastic anemia? Aplastic anemia is a disease in which the bone marrow and the blood stem cells that reside there are damaged. What are the findings observed in aplastic anemia? The findings observed in aplastic anemia is pancytopenia, which is characterized by severe anemia, leukopenia, and thrombocytopenia. So basically, all the cells that are normally in the bone marrow will have an effect, and they would all be decreased. All these cells that reside inside the bone marrow will have a normal cell morphology, but the total number of cells would be decreased, and there is going to be fatty infiltration, which can be observed with a dry bone marrow tap. Name all the causes of aplastic anemia. The causes of aplastic anemia include radiation and drugs such as benzene drugs, chloramphenicol, alkylating agents, and anti-metabolites. Also, viral agents can cause this such as parvovirus B19, Epstein-Barr virus, HIV virus, and hepatitis C virus. Also, DNA repair defects such as Fanconi's anemia can lead to aplastic anemia, as well as idiopathic conditions such as immune-mediated or primary stem cell defect can all lead to this aplastic anemia. What are the symptoms observed with aplastic anemia? The symptoms of aplastic anemia are all due to that pancytopenia. So because you have a decrease in platelets, you would have bleeding disorders. Because there is that decrease in white blood cells, you would have infections. And of course, there is going to be anemia. So the symptoms of aplastic anemias are fatigue, malaise, pallor, purpura, mucosal bleeding, petechiae, and infections. What are the treatment options for aplastic anemia? To treat aplastic anemia, first you would have to get rid of the causative agent. So for example, if drugs are causing aplastic anemia, you get them off those drugs. And then you could proceed on to immunosuppressive regimens such as with antithymocyte globulins or cyclosporin. Also, you can look at allogenic bone marrow transplantation as an option, RBC and platelet transfusion. And lastly, you could treat them with GCSF, which stands for granulocyte colony stimulating factor, or GMCSF, which stands for granulocyte macrophage colony stimulating factor. How does chronic kidney disease lead to anemia? In chronic kidney disease, there is going to be a decrease in erythropoietin. When there is a decrease in erythropoietin, there is going to be decrease in the hormonal signals for hematopoiesis. And when hematopoiesis cannot happen, this leads to non-hemolytic normocytic anemia. For more information on this topic, click on the link in the description section below. For a full USMLE Step 1 review, be sure to check us out at usmlefasttrack.com where we help you review the entire first aid for the USMLE Step 1 with high quality videos and hundreds of detailed pictures for a better understanding of the material. So to learn from the best USMLE review book, be sure to check us out at usmlefasttrack.com.